In this video, I'm going to show you how to create cinematic images using a single prompt in Midjourney. Now this prompt is going to be a template prompt that I will leave in the description, so if you'd like you can copy, paste, and follow along. Now this is going to be wonderful when it comes to referencing some of your favorite cinematic shots from well-known films, or just creating cinematic images in general. So let's get into it. So this is actually one of the prompts from my AI Art Studio 2.0. As you can see, I have it down here for cinematic still. We can open up an example photo and prompt if we'd like seeing this prompt be used in action. And now we can copy this and paste it into Midjourney. So I can type in slash imagine and then paste in that prompt. And now as you see right here, we have information that we can fill out. We have a subject that we need to fill out. We have a preposition that we need to choose from, a background and environment, and a certain film style that we need to copy or take inspiration from. For many of you, you already know what you want to create a cinematic image on, but for those of you who don't and need a little bit of extra help on getting these certain parameters like subjects, background and environments, and film styles, then you could potentially use my AI Art Studio 2.0. Because within here, I have a full components database with all of these different components that you can use for your AI art with images for every single one. So there's 625 of these. And as you can see, I have 100 background and environments to choose from. This will just help give you some inspiration or generate some new creative ideas for yourself. First, I need a subject though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my 100 subjects and I'm going to look for some inspiration on a subject that I could use for my cinematic still. For this first cinematic shot, I think I want to have it be of a pirate. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to copy that, head back over to Mid Journey. And then where it says subject, I'm just going to paste that in. So we have cinematic still of a pirate. And now I have to choose a preposition. So how do I want the subject in relation to the background and environment? Do I want them in something, on something, around something? Here's where I pick that. I think I'm going to choose on for the preposition. You can think of your own. It could be below something, above something. However you want the subject to be placed within the background and environment, that's where you can choose that right there. It's a pretty important word actually. I could also head back to home and just to make this list a little bit more simplified, I can open up some of my favorite background and environments and I can choose from the eight that I have favorited. So I'm going to go to a moonlit beach. I think that will be kind of fitting for a pirate. So a pirate on a moonlit beach. I'm going to head back over to Mid Journey and I'm going to paste that in. So now we have cinematic still of a pirate on a moonlit beach. And now this is where the important part comes in, choosing a certain film style to inspire this cinematic still. So once again, I actually have film styles within my art studio. So as you can see, I have five favorited. If I open those up, I can see some of my favorite cinematic film styles, or I can open up my components database, hit show one more group, and view 25 different ones that I can choose from. So for this image in specific, I really like the coloring of the Revenant. I like that cold feeling and I kind of want to represent that within my image. So I'm just going to copy this entire thing. I think it's important to have the film title and who the film was by within your Mid Journey prompt. So I'm going to copy that, head back over to Mid Journey, and now I can paste that in cinematic films. Next, I get to choose my parameters, and this is really up to you. What I like to do is I like to have a cinematic aspect ratio, and then I kind of just let Midjourney decide what else to do with the image. I usually only change the aspect ratio because I think Midjourney does a pretty good job otherwise. So I'm going to make this an aspect ratio of two to one. So it's a nice rectangle wide shot with a very open field of view. And just like that, we have our first prompt done, and now we can send it off and look at the results. And this is just using elements from the AI Art Studio. So if you're struggling to generate ideas or you just need some inspiration on what to do, then you can go over there and check out some of those elements. If you're interested in the Art Studio, you can learn more about purchasing it using the link in the top pinned comment or the description below. And just like that, we have our first cinematic image complete. Midjourney did a wonderful job at creating this. It did keep that same coloring of the Revenant, that very cold and blue color. And these are just super epic, very cinematic especially like this bottom left one here. But the top left actually looks the most real to me. It looks like this was actually taken with a camera. So what I'm actually going to do is upscale that and put this in my art gallery on my art studio. So now that I've saved the image in order to upload it to my art gallery, what I'm going to do first is copy the prompt I used in order to generate this picture so I can reference it at a later date and maybe change some things about it or use it again. I'm going to go back to home, add to gallery, paste in the prompt, and now I can upload the photo to the body of the page 
just like that. And now that it's done loading, I can click off and it's been added to my art gallery. So now when I go into my backend art gallery, I can see all of the prompts I used in order to generate some of my favorite pictures. As you can see, the pirate falls down right here. And I also have this nice homepage view that when I click on an image, I can see the prompt that I used in order to generate that image. Now I'm going to show you an example of how the cinematic film style does affect the image. So I'm going to generate an image using a certain film style, and then I'm going to keep everything the same, and I'm just going to change the film style. That way you can see how choosing a good cinematic film or choosing the right cinematic film for your image does make a difference. So let's get into that now. So once again, I'm just going to go right here and copy this prompt real quick. I'm going to type slash imagine and paste it in. Now I'm going to go find a subject and a background and environment for this image that we are about to generate. Okay, now that I have my subject and background and environment all selected, I have a steampunk inventor for the subject and for the background and environment, I have a cozy library. So we have a steampunk inventor in a cozy library and now we need to choose a cinematic film in order to initially send off this image. Then we'll choose a different cinematic film and see how the two compare. So for the first cinematic film, I think I want to do American Psycho. I think that one always generates some awesome results. So. First, I'm going to open up my cinematic films, and then I'm going to head over to American Psycho here. I'm going to copy this, head back over to Discord. I'm going to paste in where it says cinematic film. Now I can set parameters. I'm going to keep these the same across all the images. I'm just going to do an aspect ratio of four to three. Now I can send this off. And while that's generating, I'm going to go look for another cinematic film style to use in replacement of American Psycho. That way we can kind of compare the two. For this one, I want to use something kind of similar, but not exactly the same, because if I were to use something like Citizen Kane, obviously the image would probably be black and white and there would be a stark difference, but I want to show you how it takes the minuscule differences and really adds it to the image. So for this, I'm going to be using The Master by Paul Thomas Anderson. As you can see, this film looks very nice, very cinematic, just like American Psycho, but there are some differences within the two. So I'm going to copy this. And now I have everything the exact same within this prompt, except I've only changed the film style. So now let's send this one off. As you can see, this is a steampunk inventor in a cozy library with the cinematic film style of American Psycho. And this next image I'm about to show you is the exact same prompt, but we just changed the film style to The Master instead of American Psycho. So when I click that, as you can see, there are definitely stark differences. I think Midjourney does a good job at pulling from the characters within the movie and also the way that the film actually looks. This image is a little bit more smoky and a little bit more grainy than American Psycho, which is a little bit more clear and more vibrant. So as you can see, when you do pick a different cinematic film, it will generate a completely different character, completely different image, uh, film style will be different. So it's important that you hammer down on what cinematic film you want to use when you are using this prompt. That's all I have for this mid-journey tutorial. If you did enjoy, please drop a like and subscribe. Also comment below letting me know your feedback on how you would improve this cinematic prompt. I would love to hear it. If the AI Art Studio interested you at all, I will leave a link to purchasing it down in the description below or the top pinned comment. There's over 600 users and everyone is loving it so far. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.